friends, I'm Pastor D, and welcome to another episode of Pedagogical Perspectives, principles that permutate your paradigm or may change the way you look at some things. Well, we've been dealing with essentials to reaching your potential. Well, how are you? How are you doing? Have you been following along with us in this teaching? Are you committed to not caring or adding to the wealth of the cemetery? So many of you are loaded with possibilities. You're loaded with ideas. Some of you are loaded with books that haven't been written. Some of you are, 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 are loaded with songs that haven't been composed. You're loaded and, and, and you can't base who you are on what others may say who you are because the truth about you, the truth of the matter is, nobody knows that truth because it is a secret, the Bible calls it a secret wisdom that only God knows. Read uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 7. God has a hidden wisdom concerning you that only he knows. And the only way you can know is that you got to spend some time with him because he is the only one that knows. You know, he told Israel, and through the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29 11, I know, I know the thoughts, the plans that I have for you. You know, so many times we let others uh, determine, you know, who we are. Don't, don't let others determine who you are because there's some things about you that are on the inside of you that no one knows but God. Well, when I studied the Bible, I found this amazing fact. Every person that God met and try to and, and try to introduce themselves to themselves, they never believed it. They couldn't believe it, conceive it at first. Abraham, you're the father of many nations. And all he can see is I'm 90 years old and my wife is barren. And God had to introduce himself to Abraham in Genesis 17. He says, I'm God almighty. I'm God almighty. Moses, you're going to lead my people out of bondage. Moses asked the question in Exodus 3 verse 10, who am I? to go to Pharaoh and lead this great people out of his captivity. God answers him in the next verse, the 11th verse, but look at the, look at the answer he gives him. Moses asked, who am I? And God says, I'll be with you. Wow. But God, wait, that, that, my question was, who am I? And God says, I'll be with you. So what God was really saying, it doesn't matter who you are or what you can do. What matters is who's with you and what I can do. I'm, I remember we went over that word omnipotent. I'm almighty. I'm omnipotent. You know, one of the things that God says about himself in Isaiah 46, 
verse 8, 9, and 10, he talks about, he says, there's nobody like me. He says, there's nobody like me. You, you need to understand that, that there's nobody like the God you serve. He can do anything. There's absolutely nothing too hard for him. And he has placed purpose inside of you. And you can't let other people determine what that purpose is. I'm reminded of the story of the plane that was flying maybe about 15,000 feet in the air. And they were experienced. The pilots were experiencing some problems with the elect electronics on the plane. Apparently, some rats had boarded the plane. I don't know if they got a ticket. <laughs> and went through TSA, <laughs> but they had got on the plane and they were eating the wires. And, and, and so the pilots called into the control tower and said, we got a problem. We're apparently the rats are eating away at our wires and, and we're about to have some problems. And, and, and the control tower told them to say, well, what you need to do is just go higher, go higher, take your altitude a little uh, higher, go to about 25,000, 30,000 feet. And when they went higher, the rats died off. Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to you. And you got some rats pulling at you. But I want to tell you that if you go higher, go higher in God, those rats will die off. Those rats will have to stop chewing away at, at your character. Listen, there's so much possibility in you and you need to see, you need to have a vision of yourself that God has of you. Oh, some writer said, I am what God says that I am. Do you know what God has said about you? Do you know what God has said about you? Stop hanging on to the negative things that other people say and trust God. You know, our problem is, and if we ever get this right, if we ever figure this out, we're going to be okay. What to hold on to and what to let go of. Because we hold on to things we need to let go of. And we let go of things we need to hold on to. And so we need to understand that. And, 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 you know, there's some people that are good for where you are, but they're not good for where you're going. And you got to be able to know, you know, that you can't care, er, carry everybody into your future. You know, there's some people that don't qualify to be your friend. They like an unplugged refrigerator. They can't keep nothing. <laughs> oh, you know somebody I'm talking about right now. <laughs> you know. But listen, ultimately, I want you to understand what Abraham had to come to understand. You know, in ancient times, they had a custom. When God made a covenant with Abraham, generally when a person made a custom, a, a, a covenant with another person, they would cut out, they would get a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old goat, and a three-year-old ram, and a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And they would cut the animals in half except for the birds. And then both of the two parties would walk uh, like a figure eight through those cut animals, signifying that both parties were assuming the responsibility for the completion of that covenant. But God put Abraham to sleep and as a consuming fire, as a smoke, a smoking fire torch, he goes through those cut animals himself. What he was saying is, I alone am assuming the responsibility for the fulfillment 
of the covenant that I've made with you. And I want you to know, when it comes to reaching your potential, God alone is assuming the responsibility of the fulfillment of that covenant. Now, listen to me. Just before we leave, I want you to agree with me that you're going to allow God to do everything he wants to do through you, that you're not going to let fear hold you hostage. There's a, there's a, there's a business in you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody that's listening to me right now. There's a business in you. There's a, yes, there is. You're working for somebody else, but God has called you to be an entrepreneur. I'm talking to somebody that has a song in you right now. I know Marvin Sapp can write a song, but he ain't the only one that God got that can write a song. You have a song in you and you just have not allowed yourself to, to do what God has given you to do. Who, where are you? Who, are, who am I talking to? There's something. You're loaded and other people can't see it, but you're loaded because it's hidden. Potential is hidden, but it's there and you can do it. I want you to set yourself in agreement with me for the fulfillment and the manifestation of that gift, that talent that God has placed in you. Come on, say it with me. I can do this. I can do this. Come on, say it. I can do this. I believe God with you and we're going to see it happen. Listen, join me again for the next episode as we continue to teach essentials for reaching your potential. Until the next time, this is Pastor D saying, let's stay connected.